Hello again. Welcome to another one of our Destination History programs here on the Destination Yuri channel. And boy are we in for a treat today. We have a man who has come in specially to talk to us. Uh, a man that we've been looking to speak to for some time. Eddie Quinn who comes from the townland of Fadham and who has lived in Yuri for 57 years. So you're very, very welcome, Eddie, to the programme today. Thanks very much. No bother. And Eddie, I mentioned that you came from the townland of Fadham. That's right, up of Fadham. A proud Fadham man. Yes. The Rock. And you came from, what was the name of the area again? The Rock. The Rock. Yes. And uh, your mother, um, we have a picture here of your mother, yeah. Annie. Yes. And Annie, I believe, was, to her own name, she was Annie Collins. That's correct and right. Maybe you tell us a wee bit about Annie. Well, what happened was, with mother, old Willie Hollywood was at a big do out in her house. In Pat Collins's. And we, Mary McAnally, was there too, was over from Aidan Tubber. That was Granny's sister. And Willie Hollywood fell in love with her and married her and took her, took her across the hill to the rock. And they had to call her Mary Willie because there was another Mary Hollywood the far side of her. And she was called Wee Mary Willie. And she was a wee woman, but they had no family. But what happened was, Willie went out to mother. She was something about 30 years of age, mother. He says, Annie, I will you the place. I will you the place if you come in and mind us. And of course, mother says, well, suppose I bother. She says, what's that from that you now? So mother come in and minded the two of them. And Willie died. And she buys him in Uri. And she minded Mary till she was 90. At she, uh, and Mary was throwing a wee pension, 10 shillings a week. And I remember it well. There was a woman who went down to Mary one day, one evening, and she said, Mary, would you like to die? <laughs> and Mary says, oh, but this is right. Mary says, I know where I am with Annie, but I don't know where I'm going. And she was 90. At her senses. McCrink. We carried her down the road and buried her with her husband Willie in St Mary's. Her mother walked away and slaved away herself. And then who comes along? I should have put him, Dad come from Omid. And he lived with the two of them before Mary died. Mary lived with Mary for years, but anyway, we should favour the family then. And Times was bad, and that one went to America. And I don't remember him. I was only two. But he had two jobs. He had to work at, in the evening and in the morning for to send money home to keep us and money to keep himself. He had two brother in laws over there. Two, two brother in laws over there. Peter and Pat and Peter was over in America. That's who took him away over. But the story was I never seen him. But he was good to us. And mother was a hard goer. And we farmed away to, to Fairley. <laughs> Went away one morning down to Nury. He was only 18. He was farming all his life with us. He was 18. And he says, Ma, he says, uh, I have, I got a job in Fishers, he says, boy. But I want to take a straw. Will I tell you the story? Oh, but the, uh, the, the bag of straw. We'll get that in a wee minute, Eddie. But first of all, uh, if, if we take a wee look, um, this girl here, uh, you had three sisters. Yes. Who's this girl here? Now, Conla's the eldest. She's the second. I should have heard first. Conla first. Conla went away first then. With England. Mm -hmm. A nurse. She went away the next nurse. Went away a nurse in England. What's this girl's name? Alice. 
Eilish. Yes. Connor was the, that's the, first, the second, she's the second daughter. And Bridget Ann, Nan what we call her, she went with England too, a nurse. Well there's... That's Connor now. That's the eldest girl? Yes. So Connor was the eldest and then Eilish uh, yes. was next. Yes. And Nan, uh, we have a picture of Nan here. Yes. This is Anne. Yeah. Nan. Uh. And obviously uh, she's a nurse. Yes. Were the other girls... Yes, they were nurses. Three nurses? Yes. But they went off with away. They married and went off with Australia. There's one out there that the Connor wants about 70 years in Australia. But she come home to, to visit us. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll have a poem. I'll, I'll tell you the poem I wrote whenever Jerry left for County Mead. The whole thing was all over then, and Father, Father Mouse was over. The whole lot was finished. I'll tell you the poem. But Nan then left. Nan left. And I quit the farming. I quit the agriculture because I knew how. I then started the suckling herd and sheep and breeding mares. No farming because I knew how to gather sports or pudding sports or nothing. Um, and where is this she's girl in now? St. Helens. Today? She's in St. Helens, where her husband built a, bought her a house there when they got married. And she's there still. And the she other two daughters. And the other girls in Australia? Yes. The other two girls went to Australia. She didn't go. She stayed with me. And are they, still, are they still alive? That Ellis once died there in November. She was, she was, she died in November the 12th. And she was in March, 9th, in March, the following March, she'd be 91. She died three months before, before 91. She was over 90 when she died, that Ellis one. And, and still going. And Connell's... Connell's still going. And right. many, many children at Connell? She had ten. Ten children? She had twins. One of the twins died. Why right. so? Uh, all of them scattered all over the country. So, uh, three girls and three nurses. Yes. And then here we have a picture of Feely. Yeah. And you were saying there that Feely, in the old Fadden tradition, Feely went to Newry and joined up with Fishers and he was what age? 18. 18 and of course um, we know at that stage about uh, the, the the bags of straw that the men yes. slept on known yes. as the donkey's breakfast. That's right. And you were just about to tell us about the story uh. that you've told me before yes. and, and, and tell it to, the, to our viewers here about uh, fill in the bag of straw for Feely. So Feely come home, Feely says, I got a job on the boat, he says, along, I think it was, now as far as I know, it was with Johnny Chief. And he says, I have to get a bag of straw, a tick of straw. So mother says, well I have a tick, she says, Eddie, you go out and fill it, she says, in the barn. So I went out to the barn and filled the tick of straw. Took it in and mother so the tablet with a big skein thread and double it over like a, like a bail, like an envelope. Put a cord around it to tighten it up, tighten it out to the yellow. And I carried it down on my back like a, like a bale of hay. And Philly went off, Philly went off to get the boat down Yuri. And now, to meet now before, before we go any further, you carried it down... Through what? the hilly field, through the half acre, and onto the corner of the wood. Yes, and down, down, and down, down, down. would know where I'm going now. And down the Lockman's path. And over, and over the over the Flagstaff Road, and on the left, way down far off, over about a quarter of a mile over, there's a Lockman's path. And why I got his name? It's the Lockman Gibbetson. Patrick Morgan and Johnny McElhinney went down that path for years. And that's why I got his Lockman's path. The old Lockman, and they were, they had twelve shillings a week. That's what they got, them times. But I landed down anyway, and the, the Lockman's pad is this side where that new house is built, where my child lives. And there was no new road then, there was a railway on, on the neat. There was a bridge. We went down around the bridge, down to the right, and over into, into the locks. Who met me but my brother? He says, Eddie, he, come, on, come on aboard, he says. He says, I hear you are, he says. 
My lady says, that's what the holy says, the donkey's breakfast. I said, I'm going to sleep on the night. And I'm a jolly fella. <laughs> like the gypsies at the castle yet. He said, I last when I say, really, it's a, it's a wonderful world we're living in. You, sat, you slept last night on a, on a mattress. Now tonight, you say, you're to see sleeping on a, on a downpour's breakfast. A take of bread. A take a straw. So, he said, put on around and he says, goodbye, Eddie. He says, we meet again. And as far as I know now, they only had 28 shillings a week. And he sent 10 shillings home to mother. He was good. And I landed back home, and mother says to me, Well, Eddie, fairly he'll farm no more. He's a way to plough the ocean. And she was right. From that to this, he done that. And I farmed. So I carried on farming with her as best I could. I got horses and all of my own. And I said, Look, farmed away at her. Here's a nice picture of the house up at, up at the rock. Yes. That was just across the and road. And I from picked all them slits. A wee boy. There was a woman. I'm going to tell you about that wee house. There was a woman. Used to come on holidays to where Dice lives now. O.J. Hollows, the publicans. He, he was my, Hollows was my to keep John Tyre's sister. And they got the kitchen chapel. And they take all the children up round. And I had that house. The whitewashed walls, the chimney washed, the green wall, the walls, the, the, the whole painted, the tarmac round the foot of the house, and the foot up round. The windows painted green and white, the gate painted green and white, and the gravel the whole yard. With a, with a place, with a wee place I, I, I picked up on the mountain and slept it down with the pony for to put over the street, the gravel. Love. She says, if you're a wee house, she says, lovely. Says Mrs. Hollywood. There's a credit to you. So it was. That's many years ago. But it's now down. And I bent all them slits because the wind was playing hell. It was old and yet the wind was pulling the slits off. And I bent all them. I done that myself. Now, you, your family lived just across the road from Tom McCardle. Yeah. And Tom McCardle was drowned. Yes. On, on the walnut, isn't that right? That's right. And, and there was two boats lost uh, in 10 months, the Privet in December 1940 and the Walnut in October 41. Yeah. And there were six Fadham men lost yeah. in those 10 months. Yeah. I knew them well. Can you tell us what, what it was like in Fadham with those tragedies? Very sad. Very sad. More than sad because there was people there that had no, had, no, had no money, only just the wages from the sea. No other way of living. Didn't farm. And they had to look for money. So they got money from the government that seen the husbands all dead. Way. Lorgan Murphy was one. Yeah. Pat, O'Neill, Pat, Pat McVeigh was one. Peter Charlie was one. Tommy Charles was one. Who else? Who else was? Who else again? Paddy O'Neill. Paddy O'Neill. Down at the locks. Down at the locks. Who else was another? And and uh, John John Hollywood. Uh, only Matt, Hall Matt, only Hollywood. Only Hollywood. Matt and James' brother. Yes. Well, they weren't so bad because they were all sailors and they were doing all right. But those other people was very was was depending on their week's wages. And their, and also, Hollows was all right too. Only Hollows crowd. For he only was still at sea and, and all, and they were all all right. But, and Murphy's was all right. But those other people wasn't so good now. My Charles. They'd all have gotten higher. Hey, that was your neighbours across yes. the road. And that was the decentest man ever was known was telling me, Charles. I hope he's in heaven. And I have to say that. I was a wee fellow with. My pony putting down, down, the drills were asleep. And what happened? He was at the water looking down. And what happened? I broke my single tree. And I come up with my pony with the head. He says, young fellow, he says, 
what happens today? Brooke, we're seeing anything. He says, wait a minute, he says, you mean that we pony? He says, like a pony. He says, go up and tell, he says, Biddy, he says, to give me a yellow, put his knife out of his pocket. I have a wee iron bar, he says, in the, in the barn there, with three holes in it. And that'll not, not stop, yes, you see. Go down and tell Biddy, he says, that's the bridges are called the way. He called him, go up and tell Biddy, if you don't put a rope. I'll never forget. I went up and she says, what do you want the rope for? Well, I, I don't know, he says, but he sent me sent up for a lump of rope, and he's the knife to cut it. I cut a big, she says, a couple of yards of a rope. I took down the rope, and he cut it in three places. Take two nuts on each, put it in the wee hole, the same thing, the thing, the thing, the thing. Now, he says, take that down, put it in your sleep, he says, and walk away, he says. That'll get your job done. Was that a decent neighbour? Definitely. Definitely. I lifted my hat to that man. I always talk about that man. Tell me, Charlie. Well, here's a, here's a, a, a nice image here, Eddie. A fine horse there. And go to race, buds. That's putting tea up to, up to spuds in the drills. With that mare there. That's one of the other mares. That's her mother, that big mare. That's her mother. That's her mother there. That's Nan that's sitting at Alvo. That's my sister Nan. Right oh. on that big mare. Up at the gate. I had to close the gate a few. She run out of the street. Oh, that was the gate into the... I remember that uh, there was two... two uh, pillars. Two pillars with wrought iron gates. Yes. Yeah. Paddy Conley's name's on that gate. Is that right? Yes. Paddy Conley made that gate. Over at the forge at club. Yes. Paddy Conley made that gate. Well, that's good to know. We'll have to get a photograph of that, Eddie. And that's Nan on the, on the mare. That's Nan on the mare. That big mare. That big mare's near 70 Nans. That mare could talk to you. Is that the sister you were telling me was a, was a great war? She was great for that, dropping spuds. That girl, there was a neighbour man said, he says, you wouldn't be on the street with her, he says. He says, if she was a wee fella, he says, it's not that actual in the country. She would drop spuds as quick as a dropper. She would keep before me in the drills. I couldn't, the horses wouldn't keep up with her. You put the bags of spuds in the middle of the fence, you run over a ripple like that there and put them in and away like here. Now who's this wee girl here, Eddie? <laughs> now, she could be, wee Josie, she could be one of the chiefs. That wee girl there. She could be, on the mayor. And that's the mayor's fool. Right. That's, that's Geraldine. That's your and we down, Yes, and we Downey. And Paddy Downey, Paddy had lost his arm. That's his wee daughter there. That's beside her. Oh, that's the, uh, Paddy Downey lost his arm in Fisher's. Yes, that's in, his daughter. In, the, in the, uh, the screen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Jason, for the hard working chap. Good lad. And this is, this is your good lady here. Yeah. Now, there's a story you have to tell us. Everybody knows your wife as Queenie. Yeah. But her name's Anne. Yes. How Anne did, Regina. How did she get the name Queenie? Well, as far as I know, there was a boat, a father or somebody was on a boat called Queenie. And some of them called her Queenie. Her father was Arthur McConnell. Yes. I'm and he, he, was, he was killed on the own. Yes. Um, and, she was and, only young. She was only a child then. And, and, and you, you got married to Queenie then. 57 years ago. Uh, so it was when, 19, 1956? Uh, for Jasper. Time was on. Yeah, 57 years, uh, yeah. Well, I was 30, I was coming 32, and now I'm coming, now I'm coming 90. So, so you were 32 when you left Fatham? Yes. And you came to Newry? Yes. But, and you moved in, and I've heard Queenie saying before that there was four generations. I thought it was a fantastic story, and and we should let it, the the viewers know that there was four generations of women in the one house. That's right. There was your children. Yes. There was your wife. Yes. There was the wife's mother ah. and the granny. Yes. So four generations. In the one house. In the one house. That's all un women. Unbelievable. I went into it. How did you stick it, Eddie? I went into it. I went into this room. I had the best mother-in-law that ever was born. Her and I never had a woman for 20 years. 
It was the happiest place ever I lived. In because, Rooney's Terrace. Rooney, because I'll tell you why. When I started working the morning down the factory, why I went to Newry? Because I was going with Queenie. I can tell you a better story than that. I was going to Yale before I met Queenie. And this Sunday night she says to me, Eddie, she must be talking to her friends in the house because she came out. And she says, Eddie, I was thinking there, she says, we're going out this couple of years. She says, have you any notion of getting married? I said, in my twenties. <laughs> I says, no, 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 I have not. But she says, no, he says, me going with you. Silent with my mother. And what happens to Eddie? I think it's a funny boy. Eddie jumped on his bicycle and he said, just a good night. We might meet again, I says. We didn't live in no, no bad terms, like. We left in good terms. Say, good night, says, we might meet again, Chadley. I'm a bit. And landed in the, in, the, in the Columbia Hall. And who was in the Columbia Hall at the second last dance I landed there? Probably best behind the hole and come in round. And when he was all piles up along the side, and she says to the girl, she says, Here's a fellow sick the night. And she was nice with girl. And I didn't hear her saying that, but she told me that. Now she says to the girl, Here's a fellow sick the night. And I went up along the side of the dance, the second dance. I loved dancing. And she said, May I run up the side and picked up her dancing right. The another dance was telling her after the dance anyway. The next dance was called, the last dance was called, and I do the last dance, and I says, have you a boyfriend? No. I say, what about leaving you home? She says, that's all right. She says, uh, I haven't started ever. Over the road, over the seat, and down Pool Lane. And she says, I'll go in the front, out of the front door, she so you go round up, round the back, and I'll meet you at the back with the space again. So I went round round the back, and here she came out the back door, and I had the base again. So we stopped there for a wee while, and anyway, I'd see her again. Just a good night, and we home. And from that to this, we were going for about three years. And of course, it was the same crack again. Are you going to get married? <laughs> well, I says, by the way I'm farming, I says, <coughs> I couldn't keep a woman. No, I'm not going to three on the farm. I'm not going to take a woman as a mother. But she says, if I got you a job, she says, would you go to it? I will certainly. So she got me out in the factory in Horrocks. This is right. Oil looms. Well, she was a weaver. Oil looms. The poor man says, take him in, he says. I, I see him. She says, he comes from, free, from the free state. He says, I can't stop. She says, no. He lives at the border, but she's not in the free state. She says, he says no. But she sent him in. So I went into the man and he says, yes, he says. Now, you want a pair of dungarees in overalls, he says. He's not in the country you are now, he says. You're in the factory. You want a pair of overalls? I say, I'll get that, he says. And you start the morning. So that to this. From that to this, I walked away. And I was working there for about six months, and I got engaged anyway. And we says we'll get married. And we were married. There were six of us married the same day in the chat either. Six of us married up on the altar. The same day. Six. And I don't know what way they're all going, but we're still here anyway. After 57 years. We're still going. <coughs> and there's a picture, obviously, of of your two girls, uh -huh. Geraldine and, and uh, Connla. Uh -huh. but, but, that's only, but that's not them there now. That's only Geraldine there. But that, is that, is that, or is that, is that, is that, is that uh, Connla there? I would nearly think that's the two of them, Eddie. Because there's a wee downy one with them. There's a wee downy one with Geraldine. There's me at the lamp. That's you at the lamp, Eddie. Uh -huh. Tell us about that picture. That lamp? Yeah. Now, this is at the end of the bottom lane. This is at the fork of the road? Yeah. That's right. Well, I was coming up from the farm. Why I loved Rooney's Terrace was, it only took me a quarter of an hour to go back up home, up the hill head, on my bicycle. When I got to the top of the hill head, I could cycle up Jack Hollow's Hill and Owl. They landed up at Only Kings. There were no walls with the house of Jack and they threw me basically in there and up the fields to mother. I never left the farm. Yet I was married. I farmed away all the time. I, I loved the farm. And the story was, coming home one evening, there's my coat and owl, do you see? My old coat and owl, my top boots and owl. And this man stopped me and he said, Halt, he says, 
So I want to go. Would you stand there? He says, I want to take a photo of that. He says, the canals, the canals, boats is all quitting. He says, and I want you to take a photo of that. He says, that lamp, he says. He says, will you let on your other tamp later? He says, of it. Say, I will. Listen, I know. I put my hand up and he's up the photo and he sends it to me. He says, I'll send you a photo of that. That's how I got that photo. But there's a photo I should have got. I would like to know. There's a fellow taking photographs one Sunday morning at the flagstaff of a frosty day. And I come up the flagstaff with two mares and two foals. And he shouts down, stop. And I stopped. I took the photo of the two of us. The, 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 the five of us. The two mares and the foals. Each side the foals. And the mare. And the foals stood beside the mare. I took a photo. I said, I'll, I'll give you. He says, I'll, I, I told him where I lived. And he says, I'll send you he says, a photograph of it. But he never. But I think it was from the point. It would be a great photograph in a picture. The two mares and foals and the man standing between them. But I never got no photo of it. And it's grieved me that. Well, that was a decent man that gave me that. Well, you mentioned Eddie going back up, uh, back up from, obviously you were doing your work in Horrocks' factory, mm -hmm. and then, uh, depending on whether it was a day shift or night shift, you went to Fadham for the farming. Yes. And uh, one of our members is a neighbour, an ex-neighbour, and a very good friend of yours, Tom Ramsey, Captain Ramsey. Yes. And you were asking me about his brother, yeah. Peter. Yes. And uh, Captain Ramsey tells me that Peter used to spend an awful lot of time with yes. you. And, and also, and also we Willie Keith and we Finbar McAvoy, they're stayed in England, a, a twin of Pats. He was a twin of Pat McAvoy's, that might have been Mm-hmm. And they would, they would give you a hand? Great lads, great lads. Great lads. Phil down on the dunkle into the chart and down the road and out. Well, Captain Ramsey, I was telling you, he was telling me that his brother Peter is alive and well and living I, in I'm Aberdeen. I'm glad to hear it. I'm more than glad to hear it because there were the decentest children on the road. Very respectable of my mother and dad and Bob Ramsey. Third, they treated mother like a lady going down the road. Hello, Mrs. Quinn. Hello, Eddie. Very decent, upright people. And only hollowed. I had only ground for years and ploughed it. And mother was tired, was doing the court cut with the binder. And mother and I was stooking it up at three o'clock in the morning. At three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, stooking it after the binder cut from the two big fields. And another one up, we say, and another field opposite, opposite where, where, she, where only Hollow's daughter the house built. That was at Ramsey's. Well, just when we were talking about about uh, about Queenie, um, this this fella here, uh, another seaman in the family, and we have his medal here. Um, this is Robert Kerr. Yeah. From River Street. Yeah. And Robert Robert was killed on board the. Uh, SS Dingle, uh -huh. which was a coal boat uh -huh. uh, in government service, uh -huh. and um, it belongs to the, the uh, West Hartlepool Steam, Steamship Company. Uh -huh. And um, the only survivor from the Dingle when it was torpedoed was Ned McParland. I knew him well. From uh, Lower Fadham. From the Dan Fadham Lane? Yeah, where Dan O'Hare yes, is today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and and what relation was Robert to to Queenie? Queenie him, that, was, that was Queenie's mother's brother. That was her uncle. That was Queenie's uncle. He wasn't. And that wasn't. That photo was taken. He wasn't eighteen then. Yeah. That photo was taken. Queenie was telling me. The the um, each each man um, who died. Now his name is is barely visible on this medal today, but you can read the outline, Robert Kerr. Each member of the crew got one of these medals posthumously. And the story of the survival of Ned McParland, one of four brothers who were at sea, 
and who all went on to be captains in the Merchant Navy. Uh, the story of the survival of Ned McParland, a 17-year-old lad, was nothing short of remarkable. He clung to an upturned lifeboat for something like 17, 18 hours and uh, with other members of the crew and one by one they fell off and young McParland survived and made it back to Fatham and had a, had a career, a lifelong career with his other three siblings at sea. And Eddie, just to touch on that, when you were growing up in Fatham, mm. how important was the sea, the call of the sea to the men in Fatham? How important to the survival First of, class, of people? There was one side of the uh, lower Fatham was sailors yes. and upper Fatham was pavies. When I say pavies, pack men selling suit lengths. And mother's father was one of them, a party away in England. Now, here's two people in relatively modern times, brother and sister, uh, Anna and Pat Maguire. Yeah. And many people will remember Pat, he was a barman, uh -huh. and Anna was a legal secretary. In um, Corn's office. In, in PG Corn's yeah, office. Yeah. Mill Street. Now, there was only four months between them when they died. That's right. Uh, three months, actually. Three months. Sorry. Uh, but these, this brother and sister, unmarried, in Hawthorne Cottage, which has been demolished now, Pat yeah. McCardle owned it, mm. um, they were the nephew and niece of Captain Wee Harry Hollywood. That's right. And you, you knew Wee Harry well. We Harry's father was reared where I was born. Up on the rock on yes. the windy road. Yes. That's and his brother was left the place was Willie. And that's why then Mary, Aunt Mary, mother's aunt, was married to Willie, and that's why they called her We We Mary Willie. And there was a Mary Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood but the Duke Hollywood. The, the other so one nails, he nails pound tax and papers, how all goes at wax. The other one was Mary Luke. Yes. And Mary Willie. Yeah. The and, dogs are the other. and you knew Harry well, didn't you? I've got to tell you something. I wore the first trousers, long trousers that ever that ever he had when I was walking in a wee fella. And you made you made a wee suit. Well it, it must have been a wee suit. Yes. Because by all accounts he was a wee man. But I, 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 I fitted me down to the ground. I was a bit taller. There's a suit he says. I walked in it. Sixpence a day. Sixpence a day. Not so bad. Seven days a week. Well, you mentioned uh, your daughter Geraldine. Mm. And when Geraldine uh, left Fadham, um, you, you, you wrote a poem. Yes. Maybe you give us the poem to finish, would you? I will. As I sit here sadly thinking how the years go swiftly past, my thoughts go back to my childhood days when I was but a lad. We happy family gathered round our turf fair bright, and the fairy tales Aunt Mary told on those cold dark winter nights. My brother Juan is married now with family of his own. My sisters emigrated to Australia, to England and Australia, and then you had led home. They pay a visit now and then to greet us one and all. Still the thoughts go back, to their dear old Fadham home. Fadham home lies empty now, no clock hangs on the wall. The old rocking chair's no longer there with no key in the door. With the roaring seas and the winter winds and the seagulls weary cry. No fire bones bright in our home tonight as it did in days gone by. So farewell to my Fadham home where I spent many happy years with my horses and my play. And farewell to my friends so dear who has crossed the ocean waves. May God protect and bless you all wherever you may roam. For Fadden was like heaven to us in our dear old Irish home. Eddie, absolutely fantastic. And I... I uh, I'll tell you, will I tell you another couple of rhymes? A couple of yarns? Yes. Go ahead. In Queenstown Noble Harbour lays a Yankee liner grand. Her decks are thronged with immigrants bound for a foreign land. With our faces turning out to the shore to take a look 
I love her look. I know I'm the man never see more. Though the saddest pair amongst them is her mother and the son. For he's the last of all her family. They've all gone one by one. And now he's gone and left her in her declining days, saying goodbye, Terry darling, and don't forget to write to your dear old mother who'll pray for you each morning and each night. Absolutely fantastic, Eddie. And listen. Have another poem. <laughs> right. On the 16th of January, the storm came on. <coughs> this, this is a jolly one, but. Right. Not so sad. <coughs> Sean's crying now. On the 16th of January, the storm came on. It snowed very heavy for three days or more. The roads there were blocked from home meat to Glenmore. Says Doxy to John, get up out of bed and come down to the field so the calf may be dead. They went to the candle and used the two dogs, and down to the field the two boys did go. And so there they discovered the chaff in the snow. Now, says Doug, says John, he says, you're the man. For digging out badgers, you are a skill on. And also for working the shovel and spade. She had dug with the boys at the grave. Between digging and shoveling, they soon got the calf to the shed. Now, says Doug, says John, come in and put on the pan. And we'll have a good fry. And we'll talk of the days that's now gone by. Making the snowman and throwing snowballs. Then with the days, he says, that's gone forever. And they have, sadly, the days in Fatim, those days that you're talking about. Gone forever. They have gone, Eddie. Yes. No one's no No snake, no seamen now. No plough horses. But Eddie's still here. And still here to talk about it. Well, I can tell you. The sea, it was all down lower Fatim when I was farming. They were all seamen. And there was only three farmers on the road. That was Jack Holland and Nick McNeight and Pat and They had all horses. And I had, I had no one to join me. So I rode a fool out of mother. And then I had a big pair of horses on my own. On top of the rock I rode a big pair of horses. And played with them and loved them. Broke them in an owl. Broke them in the cart and owl. So... And still I'm here. And you love, and, and most importantly, Eddie, you love talking about it and sharing the memories. And thanks very, very much for coming in to talk to us today. And I have another I'm, wee story to tell you. I'm certain, about, about sure, Eddie, that you'll be coming back. Uh, I was, we, we're going to be pumped to tell you about the soldiers. <coughs> it was on a lonely western trail when a group of young soldiers were seated in camp. They were talking of sweethearts they had. But one at the back of the crowd seemed downhearted. Well, the lad amongst them said, Stand up, he says, Stand up, and says, Stand up, and said, Why not join in with us? Sure, I'm sure someone is thinking of you. He stood up and slowly now answered, I'm in love, he says, with two sweethearts, and two sweethearts they'll be. For one is young and beautiful, while the other seems bent and old. One has hair of silvery grey, while the other has hair like gold. How dear those lives are both to me, and none of them will I part. For one is my mother, God bless her, I love her. And the other is my sweetheart. Well, Eddie, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, Eddie Quinn. And more than welcome.